required and a latha was sent a time in the world when a rafi was required a rafi was sent a time was there in the world when you were required and that's why you were sent they all did something very significant with their life because they celebrated their originality in fact i have asked this question whenever i watch a light music concert hey he sings exactly like mohammed rafi why he didn't get so much breakthrough i realize he sings like mohammed rafi is not original rafi was original he sang like him in fact if he had sang like him he would have had a future but he chose to be a duplicate in life when he would have chosen to be the original this is me this is how i speak a little south indian brahmin tongue in my pronunciation this is me just imagine even my speech will stink unto my own ears just in order to impress you i all try to put up an accent and speak as if i'm come just now from america and tell you guys and girls happiness man i cannot say orange orange <laughs> ranga rajan i can't say rang rajan then i feel whom you are calling my own son asked me after listening to a speech of mine when he was 6 years old appa spell water i said w a t e r he said then why whenever you say you say water <laughs> as if there are three four hours there but that is me <laughs> don't ask me to be anybody else this is me i will keep a beard at photo and come without beard this is me <laughs> in fact you are peaceful only being yourself think about it all of you sitting here i am not asking you to celebrate me in fact in no program of mine i want you to come and celebrate me i want you to come and celebrate yourself you are my subject <laughs> think about it i don't care how many programs you have attended of mine think about it when you leave my program you won't think of me you will think of yourself and your life and live because you are the subject in my program and i want all of you to realize you want to be happy you have to be happy with yourself that's the third first find a way to be happy in relationship and what do you do you start enjoying the mangoes or you start going in search of an orange tree you take the turns accept the differences and limitations of other people two execute this choice if i have all the money in the world will i still be doing what i am doing answer is yes congrats you are on the right path otherwise execute the big decision and make your life beautiful a little less with all the happiness is far greater than little more with no happiness three start being happy with yourself celebrate yourself mahavira did not say let live and live he said live and let live first you show you can live then we will talk about letting others live if you don't know to live how will you let others live one beggar wanted to help another beggar it seems how Jesus Christ said love thy neighbor as you love thyself first learn to love yourself then we'll talk about neighbor without loving you you can't love anybody without celebrating you you cannot celebrate anybody and it has nothing to do with how you look it does it has nothing to do with your size you don't have to be something in all has come zero size <laughs> and some of you all get so upset about your looks half the time goes off in beauty parlor some of you feel if that eyebrows can come a little this side everything about your life will change nothing will change except eyebrows <laughs> in fact your hair is going through so much struggle straightening it curving it again straightening it and again perming it and then coloring it by ya yeah, how much ever you change the outside inside is same you can change the paint you can't change the canvas what gives you this feeling you can go to a beauty parlor and become beautiful 
Have you ever seen somebody beautiful who is doing that beauty treatment on you? It has not worked on them itself. That is why the moment you go to a beauty parlor, first they keep two cucumber in your eyes. They say, don't see me. It doesn't work. Then only pura treatment shuru hota hai. People are feeling such liberation. <laughs> this is you. In fact, when you are not so stressed about your hair, hair remained. Now you have started going for this hair treatment, that hair treatment. This is oil. Ratko ek oil. With all the wrinkles is not your grandmother such a beautiful lady because she is beautiful from within. With half the thing gone there and you don't know exactly what's speaking. Isn't your grandfather such a delight to be with? Isn't that little one where are you here as a human being where you see a dry leaf and think it's so beautiful? Then why are you so uncharitable towards yourself? You admire buildings, you admire dry leaf. You look at a cloud formation and think it is beautiful. You see a sunrise and think it's beautiful. Then why are you so uncharitable towards yourself? You have to know you're beautiful. And the beauty of you is not how the bottle looks from outside. The bottle is clean from inside. That's important. When something wrong in the world happens, out of sheer helplessness, something within you feels angry, that is the beautiful you. When some injustice happens to somebody out there in the world who is no way related to you and a line of tears comes through your eyes, that is the beautiful you. Somewhere that little you have, with that little you have, you want to share a portion with somebody else because that is a lot to somebody else, that is the beautiful you. The sacrifices that you have done in your life for the sake of the happiness of others, that is the beautiful you. A God who may not be always good to you and sometimes he has tested you beyond means and still you continue to love him, that is the beautiful you. It's not about how long your hair is and what is the complexion of your skin. And Rajan, I want a sharp nose. What, you want to cut vegetables with that or what? Rajan, I need a much better... What will you do with all that? In fact, the time we invest in trying to make ourselves beautiful from outside, if that time is invested in making yourself beautiful from within, do not live as a beauty parlor's product. Live as God's product. And then what you should focus on because it always bothers me. A few strands of grey hair bothers you a lot. And the lust within you is not affecting you. That should be affecting you. A few spots on the face is bothering you. There are a few spots in your character. That should be bothering you. Somewhere a few wrinkles on the forehead is bothering you. Some element of your selfishness has not allowed your family to be as happy as they can be. That should be bothering you. Not a physical blemish. If there is a character blemish, that should be bothering you. And when that becomes the point of your focus, that is when for the first time you are truly saying, I will walk a spiritual path. That's what spiritual, spiritual path is not going to a mandir. Spiritual path is not learning some mudra for you to sit. Spiritual path is not learning to chant something. Spiritual path is not just serving the guru. Spiritual path is saying that from today, I will commit myself to a life. That I'll make myself so pure, so pure, so pure, so pure that God should feel like descending on me. And it is this process of self-purification which is the spiritual path. And the beginning for all that is you wanting to live your life as a God's creation then a beauty parlor's creation. And when you commit yourself to that then every small change in you, every small shift in you brings about that immaculate happiness within you. 
you start loving yourself for the first time. And I think you should love yourself. Just think along with me. This universe that we have, has millions of galaxies of which our galaxy Milky Way is just one of them. And our galaxy Milky Way is just one speck of dust in terms of size in the entirety of this universe. In our galaxy Milky Way there are millions of solar systems in which our solar system is just one speck of dust. In our solar system with sun in the middle and all the planets, and Pluto being a confusion whether it's there or not, <laughs> our planet Earth is just one speck of dust. And in our planet Earth, three-fourth water, one-fourth land, and billions of life forms, humanity as a whole is just one speck of dust. And in the entirety of humanity, what are you? One speck of dust. And for a moment, my dear, visualize yourself in the entirety of the universe. You, visualize. In the entirety of the universe, just for a moment, visualize yourself. Universe, Milky Way, solar system, earth, humanity, you. And that you who is sitting here right now, in the history of the world, and to the infinite of times, there has never been another you. You are the only one of your kind. You celebrate Taj Mahal so much and call it a wonder because there's only one Taj Mahal in the world. I'm here to tell you there's only one you. You are the wonder of all wonders. People say that the prince on the palm of your hand is unique. Everything about you is. Every time I go to watch a child, the first question the elders ask me is always, he looks like who? <laughs> he looks like him. <laughs> Isn't it true? With the birth of every child, when the first crying of the child is heard, the world is hearing a voice it has never heard before. First time. In the formation of the entire face, a new piece of art by him has been unfolded into this world like this has never been created. Only one Mona Lisa, original. Only one Taj Mahal, only one Niagara Falls, only one Earth, one God, one you. If that does not make you love yourself, if that does not make you cherish yourself, why are you comparing yourself with anybody else when you are incomparable? They say you cannot compare an orange with an apple. I am here to tell you there is only one orange. You can't even compare it with another orange because like you, nobody else exists. In one of the classes I was taking, suddenly a girl got up and screamed, Hey Rajan, insight, insight. I said, what's your insight? She said, just now I realize why I am so miserable in life. Because I expect everybody to be happy with me and in the process I become miserable. I just now realize, Rajan, even if I am the world's greatest plum, somebody in the world will always be allergic to plum. And because they rejected me for being a plum, Rajan, I converted myself into a banana. Only to realize that fellow said, I want banana split and went. So then I saw an orange lover and became an orange. Only to realize, he says, my taste has changed and he went after the mangoes. So I became grapes because I saw a grape lover. But that fellow is now demanding seedless grapes. <laughs> and the child said in the class, Rajan, only today I realize, so much I have changed for the sake of the world, Rajan, I no more know who I am. Rajan, today I realize what I should have done. I should have remained the world's greatest plum. Lot of people would have come and rejected me. But it's okay. If they reject a plum, that is because their taste is different, not because I am inferior. I should have waited for a plum lover to come. And he would have loved me because I am a plum and he is a plum lover. And together we would have had the best life.
This is not just in the context of marriage. It's in the context of everything in life. This is you. This is you. If the world rejects you, that is because they have a different taste. In fact, you should love yourself so much. You should love yourself so much. If you should love yourself so much, if God ever appears in front of you and asks you, Hey, Sheetal, if there is rebirth, what do you want to be born again as? And you should be able to say, Sheetal again. One more time you get, Sheetal again. Hey, Anju, what do you want to be in life? Anju. If you get 10 more births, what do you want to be, Anju? I will continue to strive to be a better Anju. I'll continue to strive to be a better Manish. I'll continue to strive to be a better Arun. I'll continue to be a better Rajan. But let me cherish who I am. What is life without striving? What is life without becoming? What is life without improving? What is life without transforming? You want to be happy in life? You ought to be happy with yourself. You want to be happy with yourself? You have to understand. Etch it into your system. Make it your screensaver. Make posters and stick it on your shaving mirror so that you read it every morning you shave. In the history of the world, there has been nobody like you. To the infinite of times to come, there will be nobody like you. You are rare. You are unique. You are original. You are the only one of your kind. You are a masterpiece. Master's piece. Cherish it. Abusing the gift is abusing the giver. Cherishing the gift is cherishing the giver. By rejecting yourself, you're actually rejecting the one who made you. By cherishing yourself, you're cherishing the one who made you. Cherish being you. And everything will follow pursuit. For all these changes, we keep listening to talks and talks and talks. We read books and books and books. In fact, we are an encyclopedia of information. We know more than required. For all that if our life has to change, something has to change. It is not what I tell you. It is from this talk what you tell yourself. That is your transformation. The quality of my communication with the world outside determines my success. The quality of my communication with myself determines my happiness. So it is not enough you improve the quality of your communication with the world outside. It is important you improve the quality of communication with yourself. How you interpret. It's not what happens to you. It's how you interpret what happens to you that's going to make all the difference. It seems in a supermarket, there was this child who was incessantly crying. He wouldn't stop. The mother who was standing next to that little daughter said, Jennifer, relax. The child still kept crying. She was adamant. She wanted something which she was not getting, so she was adamant. So the mother again said, Jennifer, don't react. Relax. So an elderly gentleman was observing this whole thing. And he wanted to know how this entire game is going to go. Once again, the mother said, Jennifer, do not lose out on your temper and behave so badly and create a scene here. Jennifer, relax. The old man walked towards the mother and said, Ma'am, I know you are trying to control your child. But if I may ask you, don't you think you are speaking too much of adult language to a little one? The mother immediately said, what gave you this feeling I am talking to her? I am talking to myself. Jennifer is my name. I am telling myself, Jennifer, relax. So next time you are stuck in a traffic jam and you are feeling a little disturbed, tell yourself, Jennifer, Relax. Next time when you're standing in a queue and you find two people intruding and it disturbs you because you're a social activist. <laughs> Except you becoming angry, did anything change? They still get into the bus and go. Rajan, but I want to correct the society. Take up leadership. Become a collector. 
become a politician become a social activist do something about it chumma getting angry is not going to change anything do something about it a woman committed suicide and i couldn't accept that a human being lost life unable to handle the challenges of life i was also angry i gave up software and started alma mater do something about it then if you are angry about something get in and work i'm very upset about the trees they are cutting come on come into your life plant 10 trees every week create a social force and do something about it now i'm very upset about do something about it simply getting accept accept getting bp nothing is going to happen to you in life something in the world will always remain wrong and you will only remain angry and crib about it complain about it and what do you think through all your complaining is going to change either get into the drainage and clean the drainage or avoid the drainage and go simply don't stand next to the drainage keep on saying ay ay itna ganda hai if there is wrong in the world and you want to do something about it get in and do it rajin i don't think that's what i want to do with my life keep walking jennifer relax those two have intruded don't give your peace that easily to anybody jennifer relax abdullah what's your choice peace or disturbance jennifer relax next time you find your family member has gone into the toilet and is not coming out for extended period of time <laughs> jennifer relax next time you go and sit in a restaurant and you have placed the order and what you have ordered is not coming you go to a restaurant to enjoy family time to enjoy time with your friends that's why you go there why you are going there and getting stressed in fact you sit there place the order and keep on looking at the direction of the kitchen door <laughs> look at the family members in front of you no look at your friends why you are looking at the kitchen door and you go there and get so stressed ah ah aa gaya aa gaya idli sambar aa gaya aa gaya that has gone to the other table <laughs> you are not only upset what you want has not come you feel they have come after you and they have got it that makes you even more angry <laughs> ayurveda says what you eat when you are happy becomes health and what you eat when you are unhappy becomes disease it doesn't matter what you eat it's in what state of mind you eat you can read every book in the world you can follow every diet in the world and do whatever you want but you are not going to become healthy unless you learn to eat you are all the time stressed you fire somebody on the mobile and that roti is going inside it's not going to become health in fact when i thought i should lose my weight and i went to a dietitian and the dietitian said so do you eat rice i said yes i of course eat rice i live on it how much rice do you eat i told her depends <laughs> that that day that that capacity <laughs> oh you mean you don't measure i don't measure what i'm in jail or what they'll give only so much food i should eat that i'm a free bird i will eat what i want to eat And then she immediately picked up three cups those of you who have gone to a dietitian can relate to it she immediately kept three cups on the table and i can tell you that small cup she kept which was very embarrassing for me <laughs> i have ghee in that okay so she asked me in this three cups in which you have rice i immediately pointed towards that biggest cup you mean in this you have rice i said for sambar then for rasam again she said there is no point in you exercising i felt like telling her why you look so anemic <laughs> ayurveda says what you eat happily that is why in christianity they always told you pray bring some peace unto you before you eat with that stress with that gali with that bad words with one tragic movie in front of you where everybody is dying and somewhere watching that cricket match and going through this entire stress about a team which is not giving you happiness at all and then you eat and wonder why your health is it will be affected 
What is the point in going to a restaurant and getting so stressed? Relax, Jennifer, relax. And everybody is a boss to you. So immediately you call that waiter, boss, we ordered 20 minutes ago. And he has been trained to give you a standard reply, it's coming. Has he ever told you anything else? You will have to wait when it comes. And finally when it comes, enjoy. Enjoy. 